In this video, we're going to discuss critical constants. Now, these critical constants are associated with a particular phase change for gas, specifically the gas to liquid phase change. So going from gas to liquid, known as condensation, right? So really what we're looking at is the condensation of a gas into a liquid. Now, the cool thing about this process is that condensation can occur from simply compressing a gas, right? Sometimes it's also called liquefaction or having a gas be liquefied, right? So you can actually liquefy a gas by simply compressing it. However, this can only happen under very specific conditions, and these are your critical conditions defined by the critical constants. These are the state variables where it's possible for a gas to be liquefied. Uh, so specifically the critical temperature, critical volume, and critical pressure. So the plot on the left um, is a plot of five different isotherms. Um, and specifically they're increasing in temperature where T4 down here is the lowest temperature and T1 is the highest temperature. But consider these as isotherms of the same material. So it could be, you know, O2 or CO2. Pick any gas you would like that can be liquefied. Um, these are five different isotherms uh, taken of that same material, right? Um, so if you look at the uh, one labeled TC, this TC is the critical temperature, right? So this is the, the critical isotherm for the substance. The reason why we refer to it, or the, I guess the distinguishing characteristic of a critical isotherm is this inflection point that I've circled and starred here, right? It has a very specific inflection point um, of this, this, uh, this critical isotherm that we can identify uh, that that is the critical pressure and the critical volume, respectively. Now, uh, above this critical temperature, right, so let's say above TC. At any temperature above TC, uh, the critical temperature, this material will always be a gas, right? So this uh, substance is always a gas. Right, so relating that to what we see here, this isotherm is for a gas and this one is for a gas, right? T1 and T2 are fully gas isotherms. And you'll notice that they look kind of similar to ideal gas isotherms. They definitely, in a general sense, follow Boyle's law, right? As you start to decrease the volume, you get an increase in pressure, and that continues um, as you decrease the volume, right? So we see that for T1 and T2. Now, for uh, TC, it's a little bit different. Uh, and below TC, we have different possibilities where you can actually have condensation, right? So below TC, condensation is possible. Is possible. So since we can have condensation below that point, we're not necessarily dealing with a gas the entire way. And you can tell that because this isotherm looks extremely different from these gas isotherms at the top, right? So let's take this uh, T4 isotherm uh, for example, right? So at T4, which is the lowest temperature, right? It's below TC, so we know that condensation is possible. At this first point from A to B, you'll notice that as the volume is constrict a little bit, we do see an increase in pressure. That fits with Boyle's Law. So this is actually a gas in this region, right? So from A to B, you do have a gas uh, sample. Now, as you continue to compress it, right, below the critical temperature, you reach this region that I've kind of sectioned off with this dotted uh, green line that you see here, right? This is actually the region where you have a gas liquid equilibrium, right? So here you'll have a gas and a liquid present. So you can think of this as the region uh, where if you're compressing the gas uh, is starting to get liquefied, right? Condensation is starting to happen. And that's denoted uh, by a characteristic of a rapid decrease in volume without much change in pressure, right? 
which should make sense because liquids take up a much smaller volume than gases, right? Gases take up all of the volume available to them, while liquids, you know, once you start to liquefy something, that liquid is going to take up less volume. So we more or less lose this relationship between pressure and volume, this Boyle's Law relationship that we have with the pure gas, because it's being liquefied, that volume is just dropping rapidly until it gets to point C. Now at point C, that's where it is fully liquefied, right? That's where the condensation ceases. And from C to D, you pretty much have a pure liquid, right? So from C to D, right, you basically have a pure liquid. And you notice that because there's no longer any uh, change in, in the volume, right? So the, once the gas has completely been liquefied, there's going to be no more change in volume. The liquid is going to take up however much volume is available to it. And you can compress on it all day. That pressure, that volume is not going to change. You can increase the pressure as much as you want. That volume is not going to change. And so that's denoted by this straight line shooting up. Now, uh, kind of going back to this critical point, right? Um, this will give us a few mathematical tools to make use of uh, once we know we're at that critical point. Uh, if you remember from mathematics, uh, well, calculus specifically, uh, at an inflection point, there's going to be specific uh, relationships about the derivatives that we can take advantage of. So in this case, the first derivative is going to be equal to zero and the second derivative is going to be equal to zero. So if you were to take dp dv, right, at constant t, right, that guy's going to be equal to zero. And if you take the second derivative, right, dv, that's also going to be equal to zero, right? And this is only at the inflection point, right? So once you're at that critical pressure and volume, then these relationships are true. So what this does is gives us, um, uh, gives us some tools if we have a state equation, right, to be able to actually derive um, specific expressions for the critical temperature, the critical volume, and the critical temperature, right, related to the variables of that state equation. So in order to show this, in the next video, we're going to look at uh, deriving the expressions for the critical temperature, pressure, and volume for Van der Waals gas uh, using the Van der Waals equation of state.